So uh, how, uh, can, can you uh, talk a little bit about how the experience was actually setting up shop and going through a practice at, at TCU? Smooth operation today? Or? Yeah, it looked good. Today was the first day. Um, and so it gives you, look, it gives you a chance to really kind of organize what the long-term itinerary is going to be. You know, once you, once you actually do it, the logistics, leaving here, arriving there, being dressed on the field, lifting weights afterwards, getting back. So just a couple of things, um, I would say slight alterations relative to putting it on paper, but, uh, everything, everything went smooth. Sean, have you all made any concrete plans for after Jacksonville yet? Excuse me? Have we made plans? Have you all made any plans about, like, after Jacksonville? Are you definitely coming back to, uh, to Fort Worth? Or yeah, look, we haven't gotten that far, up? but, yeah. Um, the, my, my anticipation is after this game we'll be back uh, – We'll be coming back that night to to this location. Sean, you guys are starting out with a couple of defensive tackles, a little bit younger, a little bit less experienced. What are some of the things you like about those guys at that position? Well, look, I think they play with good pad level. They play with good energy. You know, it's going to take a uh, a, a, a huge group effort this weekend. Uh, we're playing a good football team, obviously. Uh, a team that's been right near the top of the league in most offensive categories. So, um, you know, I, I, I think it's going to be important that, that we do have a good rotation there, especially with the, the heat that we're expecting. Well, when you guys hey, brought Quan, when you guys brought Quan back in, in August, they, was, was there even a realistic possibility that he'd be ready to play in game one, in your opinion, or, or was that just something you were kind of waiting and seeing as the camp progressed? Yeah, I, I don't know that we looked at games and, we, you know, we're still going to meet relative to, you know, how we want to approach this first game, but um, I don't know that we set an immediate goal like the first game of the season, the second game. We, we set a course on how we wanted him to return gradually to play. And we'll continue to do that. Sean, hey, it's Brett. Um, with, so, could you comment, even though pockets of New Orleans are kind of starting to get up and running, could you comment on exactly, you know, what condition would be ideal for the community to be in before you actually move everything back to, to Metairie? And, and could you give us any updates on exactly what the damage was, maybe to the indoor facility and things like that? Well, let me answer the, the last question first. Um, I think the indoor facility and, and, and the facility overall um, came out pretty good. Um, but relative to the, the exacts regarding the, that whole area for our players, our team, our staff to return, that, that'll, I think, take care of itself, and, and we'll know when that right time is. Obviously, there's a lot that uh, goes into you know, decisions like that, especially when you're dealing with so many different people. I mean, there's over 100 and, 130 people. Hey, Sean, could you comment at all on um, adding Desmond Trufant and what he could possibly add to the team? Yeah, uh, look, we haven't, I don't think, announced anything like that. We we just discussed it. Um you know, he was in today to work out, and then, uh, you know, we're we're looking at veteran players like like him that have that experience. But um, yeah, nothing at this time. Sean, is Aldrich Roses going to be your kicker this week, uh, or is that a position you're still evaluating as well? Yeah, we'll see. We're evaluating it, and we've got flexibility with the roster that way. Coach Payton, uh, Stacy Dales with NFL Network. Uh, First, I'm you know hopeful for you guys with all you're going through. Um, my football question is: You've known Jameis for a long time. Where have you seen him evolve from the mental side of football, uh, especially you know being with him, you know versus being a competitor? 
Yeah, I think, um, look, at, it's a good question because we're in like our second year, uh, just riding back on the bus. He and I were sitting there talking to each other and you brought up something that was interesting and it, and it was a, a good question and, and I'm glad he asked it. And week to week, how you win can change. And um, it was something that he asked me about relative to when we decide on that and, and how do we go about looking at each week and the objectives to win that game. Because I think, look, um, the, the maturity level and the presence of a quarterback to just win and win and win, uh, ultimately that's how they'll be measured. And, uh, you know, I, I think, I know I've seen growth in, in someone who who's extremely vested in this process and and um, and is excited about the start of the season. But it would just be the the overall understanding of uh, how it may change week to week to what you have to do. In other words, it's not the same every week. And then oh, you know, start the week over if you didn't win. You don't know what happened or what cost you or what kept you from winning, but you just start the madness all over again and and I think uh it was a little bit more in depth than that and and so I think that would be one area. Chuck, he's he's talked a lot about his decision making and that just for you guys as a staff what's the process of coaching and and teaching that? Well, look it's it's creating a clean picture first with the, the eligible receivers, running backs and tight ends making sure that you know what they're painting for the quarterback size is pretty clear. Um, I think that's that's trim, it's it's extremely important. Um, secondly, then is understanding the type of progression relative to some routes might be an internal triangle progression. Some right routes might be read much differently, um, but just the overall understanding of flare control and then primary. You know where your potential alert throws are, maybe underneath throws after that, and, and so look. I think Brett, there's a lot of work that goes on relative to implementing a, a play, and then hopefully that begins to speed up in the quarterback's mind. Coach, can you use you, uh, the heat to your advantage on on Sunday? Could the heat possibly help you? Yeah, look, we don't really dive that much into it. We prepare for it and understand, especially in September, you know, periodically when we play a Carolina or a Tampa Bay or, you know, one of these, you know, places where it can still be warm and we think it'll be warm on Sunday, you know, the key is preparing for it um, more so than trying to figure out if it's an advantage or not. Certainly you don't want it to be a disadvantage. Hey, Sean, I know we've had to talk to you about did, did the Saints Did the Saints have a say in choosing the site? Did you get to pick out of X number of options and, and, and choose Jacksonville? Yeah, but it wasn't like Baskin-Robbins, though. Like, there, there were a handful of stadium venues that became realistic, and we kind of approached it that way. Hey, Sean, it's Brett again. Uh, what, what is it that you that you like about this particular venue, though, uh, uh, that suits you? Well, it, it's the simple logistic is relative to our fan base and the proximity of people that are either in Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, you know, Saints fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, Sean, you know, we haven't really um, been able to get your sentiments on. I mean, I know you've spoken on how much you like playing in the Superdome. Just this is the first time since the decision was made to move that first game. Just your sentiments on having to have that game moved and how you feel in general about the alternative that's been selected. I think it's, again, we, we, we kind of focus on the things we can control, and I think it was obvious that the game was going to need to be moved. And then um, logistically then it, it became... I think the the focus really became much more about the preparation than the actual venue relative to the game. Sean, uh, 
And uh, circling back, um, how did the TCU plan come together? <laughs> well, we're in Dallas to begin with. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with just logistics of where we were from New Orleans. Um, Indianapolis had a scheduling conflict. Um, we didn't want to go as far west as Oxnard. Be it that if you looked at the schedule and you saw Carolina and New England, it didn't make sense to travel away from where we'd be going for road games. Um, Greenbrier had a scheduling conflict between week one and week two. I think San Francisco is spending a week there after their first game between their second game. Um, Dallas answered a lot of questions because we were a close to New Orleans. There's two different airports that can fly in and out of that area, New Orleans, but also uh, the rest of the country. And then while we were here, we were able to scout out facilities and then also scout out hotels. And uh, it made the most sense to us. Sean, are there any areas of the organization um, that really stand out at a time like this that, that don't get a, a lot of credit? I know Mrs. Benson probably is one, but also like IT, equipment, PR. I mean, is there to, to make something like this happen? And I know it's something you've been proud of the way you guys have, have done it in London, Seattle, as well as evacuations. Yeah, look, we've, we've got a pretty good routine down. Um, it travels. You know, there's a lot of hard cases, boxes, video equipment, um, all of all of the groups you mentioned, you know, all of the people involved in football operation, you know, sometimes, you know, their work is done by the time we get started in the morning. There's a little bit of a tour element to it, if you will. Um, everyone just working and focusing on their job. Um, but we've done it enough to at least understand uh, what the goals are and the goals are to... Uh, you know, create the best environment to learn, teach from, um, and prepare to play that week. So, um, yeah, there, there's a number of people that, you know, that have certainly uh, worked late and, and worked very hard on, on making this setup accommodating. Is there an example of something that until you go through something like this that, that people might not realize, you know, it's Wednesday night and you realize you need something like this that, that people might not think of right away or something like that. Um, well, you're, you're constantly problem solving and, and, you know, I, I think that people do a good job of focusing on the things that, that they're responsible for. Um, you know, so you, you deal with film video, you deal with IT computers, you deal with uh, the food and all the preparation, you deal with security, you deal with transportation. Uh, it, it just goes on and on, uh, all, of, all of which are important jobs in, in getting a place ready to go. Um, so I, I think, you know, traveling to training camp, you know, begins to prepare teams, you know, teams that have gone or, or have had to go on the road for training camp. But it seems like we've been able to stay at a number of different places over the years. We've traveled even in preseason. Um, we've done it so much that um, we, we don't take it for granted. And yet, because I think with each move or with each location, there's uniquenesses in the schedule. I'm still penciling out a few of the, the things that I think are going to be important with our schedule here. Hey, Sean, you know... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, uh, you know, obviously in the first three weeks, it's technically a home game week one, but, you know, it's going to be a road game and, and, you know, the practical matter, you know. How do you kind of, uh, is there any kind of concessions you have to make and, like, work with the players just to avoid, you know, kind of mental burnout that I feel like would be pretty easy to fall into and, the, you know, the difficulties of being displaced and, and doing all this uh, as you go through the season? Yeah, I, look, I don't think that's the challenge. I, I think uh, we, we've, we've, we've been in this situation before. We've won in this situation before. Um, you know, I actually think the opposite can take place. Uh, you know, with training camps the last year and a half, two years being 
separate from hotels. Now, now you're you're actually bringing a team a little closer together, and 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 it happens to come right at the start of the season. So, uh, I, I don't. I mean, we try to focus on those things that we can control, but I don't think it's something I look at negative to uh, with a negative uh, light. Hey, hey, Sean, knowing that the Saints are you know such a, a beacon of hope for everybody in our area, is that something you'll you'll use to address? with the team about who and what they're playing for, or is it something you'll compartmentalize and try to separate football and, and what's happening in Southeast Louisiana? Yeah, look, I don't think anyone who's been a part of this team or been a part of this organization would, would ever doubt for a second or be able to separate the the importance of, of this team and, and to our community. It, it's kind of interwoven and now, those players that have been here longer can appreciate that more. There's some players that haven't been here very long at all that, um, you know, wouldn't have that same background. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's something that uh, players are proud and, uh, and, and recognize the, uh, the unique fan base and, and the region they get a chance to play for. Sean, I don't think we've ever asked you about uh, Michael Parents and, and his new roles. Can you just talk about how you've seen him grow through the organization and, and the job he's doing uh, in, in that new role? Yep, he's filling in for where Terry was, and he's had a pro personnel. Uh, he's an extremely hard worker. He's doing a good job. You know, he's it's a busy time of the year for him uh, with rosters, practice squads, vet practice squads, younger player back practice squads. Um, but he's, he, he's, he's been doing a fantastic job and, and, and I know watching a, a lot of tape, um, you know, I rely on him heavily when it comes to some of these decisions or guys that we want to work out. And, uh, you know, I think he's handling it well. Sean, I was wondering your thought process of deciding to keep four quarterbacks do you look at it as keeping four quarterbacks or does it pay some flexibility in other roles um, kind of change your viewpoint on that? Well, I, I think to your latter statement, because of Taysom and his role and his um, flexibility, if you will, um, you know, we, we, we look at it uh, obviously a little differently, but um, but he, he's got so much versatility that uh, it's hard to win game day saying, you know, he's going to do these things and then also be the backup quarterback. I just think that's that's difficult relative to his week of preparation. Um, and so we like the, the room. We like the guys that we have in the room. Obviously, we've got experience. We've got some, you know, youth, if you will, with, with Ian. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that was easy this year. Sean, can I ask a follow-up on that real quick? Taysom, Taysom talked quite a bit this offseason about being lean and dropping weight to just focus on quarterback. Does that affect how he could potentially be used, or is that just does that really not play a factor into it? Yeah, look, we'll, we'll be smart each week relative to what we want to do and how we want to utilize him. We, we feel like he's one of our better football players. Um, certainly we'll be mindful of where his weight is right now. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's naturally strong and he's someone who's extremely fast. And so it's a matter of just each week, what are the things that we feel like he can do to help us win?